Hey, yearbook. All right. So your next assignment is a portrait photography assignment. However, I realize a lot of you guys are at home and you know maybe your family is not necessarily around for you to take photos of, nor should we add any extra pressure to anyone right now. And um, so it's gonna be a self-portrait photography lesson instead. Um, and I think that you guys will enjoy this and it should be really fun. Um, I am coming to you today from uh, my boyfriend's photography studio. So if you see it flashing, that's because he's doing a shoot right there. Um, and I'm hiding over here recording this. So you guys all have this slideshow in your week three online learning slideshow. So it's called Online Portrait Photography Challenge. It's the name of the file. Um, and it should just come up looking like this. It's linked in, I believe, Thursdays, I want to say, slide. So normally we do this by taking photos of others, but because we're all in isolation right now, we can't really do that. So it's going to be a self-portrait lesson. Everyone has a phone or a camera. Uh, learn to love the self-timer feature. I don't want to see all of your selfies like this. That's awkward. <laughs> you can have a couple that way, but use that self-timer feature. So on this next slide, I give you how to use self-timer on your phone. Uh, if you have an iPhone, I unfortunately don't know a whole ton more about any of the other devices, but I do know iPhones really well. Um, and this is how you're gonna get to self-timer feature here. So if you look on the screen, you can see, if you may already know this, the little symbol for self-timer. When you click that, you're gonna get two options, a three second and a 10 second self-timer. I definitely would say to do that uh, 10 second one, otherwise three seconds is very fast. You can see here, it's right up there. If I touch that, I get those options, okay? So then you're gonna set it up and it's gonna count down for you and you'll, if you have the forward facing camera on, you'll see that. And otherwise you'll be able to hear it beeping and that's how you know it'll be ready to go. I know this is a little awkward for some of us because we prefer to take photos of others, but it should be fun. So you have 12 different uh, types of portraits. I did change things a little bit. Those of you who took my class last year, you're gonna see that there's a little bit of difference. Um, I removed a couple and obviously this is just gonna be super different using yourself as a subject, um, but I think it should be fun. So, you're gonna need one photo for each type of portrait. Uh, you're gonna create a slideshow, same thing as usual, and put each photo on its own slide with the type of portrait as the title on the slide. Um, I use AirDrop primarily to get my photos onto my computer, um, or I email them to myself, or I have Google Drive downloaded onto my phone, which makes it that much easier as well. However works for you, it's totally your call. Um, in total, you're gonna to have 12 photos because there are 12 different categories. Uh, I realize some of you may want to try to take photos of people that you live with or are in your household. That is totally fine by me if you can find people to take photos of. Please don't bother them, don't bug them. I know a lot of us are quite stressed right now. Um, so if you do have extra portrait photos that you want to include, you can, um, but they will count as extra credit. So just bear that in mind. Um, and then you can just add those to the tail end of your slideshow. And then, Something else I was gonna say about that, but I can't remember what it was now. I'll come back to it if I think of it. So, a portrait that has a plain background, you guys all have that as one of your main things is having a plain background. Um, this is just to showcase kind of some lighter plain backgrounds. What I mean by that is obviously I am not in a plain background right now at all. There's lots of different stuff competing for your attention. Uh, avoid that <laughs> for this particular type of portrait. There are others that that will go really well for. So you can see some dark versions. If you happen to have some kind of a dark wall at your house or even a big piece of dark fabric or anything like that, you could do a dark one as well if you want to. Um, it's obviously a little bit harder to do this one, so bear that in mind. An interesting or colorful background. So obviously I am in a very interesting background right now. I'm at a studio, I'm at a warehouse really, um, of a company and that's, this is where I'm working from right now. Uh, and the background is really interesting. However, if I took the photo 
of myself right now, that's a lot going on. And that is probably not going to be super interesting. So you would want to choose kind of like choose your battles. You want to be really cautious with this kind of one because it can be kind of distracting, especially if it's a very busy background. If it's just colorful, that's different. Looking at the one on the right with the bright pink background, that's not so distracting, but the other two could be a little bit distracting if the models weren't posed in such a way. All right, so subject straight on. What I mean by subject straight on is the shoulders and the head are pointed directly at the camera. Nothing is turned, it is completely square, parallel to the camera. Okay, so nothing is changing, nothing is different here. So straight on photos, we've got a few examples right here for you. Subject three quarters. This is a little bit harder for some students to understand, I think. Um, so I'm gonna do my best to explain it to you. So if this is completely 100% dead on, being at a three quarter angle means I'm not fully turned to the side, but I'm not fully straight on either. I'm somewhere in the middle. So I'm kind of like this. So that could be a couple things. It could be that my full shoulders and head are on this angle. It could be that my head is the only thing on this angle. And again, I'm not fully here and I'm not fully here. I'm kind of in the middle. So you should be able to see a little bit of this side of my face, but not quite as much as this side. So that would be kind of a partial three quarter angle. Um, so looking at these three shots, you can see the only major difference between the three of these is this last one of Jack Nicholson is from a higher angle. So you're seeing more of the top of his head. That's really kind of the only change there. But other than that, that would be considered a three quarter view. You're still not quite getting it completely dead on. His nose does not divide down the center of his face. You see more on this side and less on this side, okay? So full profile means I'm turned completely to the side. Full profile, okay? So all you can see is the edge of the face coming down like this. I should not see any of these photos dead on. I know it's confusing because we see profile as being like, oh, I have a profile picture on Snapchat or on Instagram or whatever. This is not that. <laughs> this is completely different. Full profile means completely to the side, right? So it's very awkward to go completely to the side if my shoulders are facing forward. So I recommend for this one, it is gonna be more straight to the side, shoulders and everything. Looking at this image, her head is just turned directly to the side, but because of the fabric covering here, you don't see the strain in her neck from doing that, but it's not usually super flattering um, and it's kind of uncomfortable to hold that position as opposed to this one and this one, her whole body is turned to the side and then you are seeing her face in profile. Okay, use of hands. So hands can be super interesting in a photograph. And yes, sometimes you might see photos where maybe it's like partially covering one eye, that's fine. Anything where it's partial coverage of your face is fine. I just don't want you to literally be like this. <laughs> like that's not interesting. So don't take that photo. So it could be the use of holding your hands here. Maybe it's the way that you're posing with your hand. I really love this last photo. I think it's really beautiful with the dark background. It's just very subtle um, and it makes her stand out immensely. So use of hands. You could use some kind of symbol with your hands as well. So looking at these, We've got different emotions being shown with the hands. So in the first one, the Robin Williams, because he's smiling, he sort of looks sort of like cheeky or like he's trying to be funny. And he's got this happy look to him. Whereas looking at the last one of Alan Rickman, because of the way his hands are like this, he looks like he's focused, like he's thinking. And he doesn't have a smile on his face. So it automatically changes the tone of that photo completely. And then the hands just make it that much more intensive. I love this one in the middle of the hand gesture. It's really a great shot, especially having his knee pulled up like this. It's a great composition and it's pretty close crop. It looks really nice. Okay, use of a prop that is not clothing. So we have a clothing specific portrait later. So this one would be some other kind of prop. Maybe it's an apple, maybe it's some kind of pretty bottle. It's completely up to you. It could be a pet, 
Um, obviously, we know pets are a little hard to take photos of. They have a tendency to move when you don't want them to. So bear that in mind. It can be a little bit challenging, but it can be any kind of a prop, truly. It's up to you guys. It could be your surfboard, whatever works for you. Looking at these ones. Again, this one's just fun. Everything's pink toned. It's really like engaging and it's a really close crop. It wouldn't be as interesting of a photo if it wasn't by far, but that's a fun prop to have. Not that I think everyone has a pale pink fake phone, but if you do, go for it. Interaction with clothing. So this is not just I'm wearing my clothing right? It's some kind of an interaction with the clothing. So looking at this photo on the left, he has his head covered, right? He has up to here covered with his sweater. And the one on the right, she's kind of holding her arms out and that really shows the way that her cape is sort of draping or whatever that is, shawl. The way it's draping, she's interacting with it. She's making it look interesting. If she didn't have her arms out to the side, we wouldn't be able to see the fringe the way we do towards the bottom. It wouldn't be as interesting. Looking at these, you might have an image. You see this a lot of uh, people holding like their jacket that they might be wearing. It can look odd. It can look stylized or it can look like scared. So just bear that in mind. The use of a hat like this one in the center is great. Um, any kind of like a watch or a bracelet or anything like that can be easily used as a prop that is your clothing, right? Something that's on your body as it stands. Could be even a necklace holding on to it, whatever it looks like for you. Okay, full length seated. So this one's gonna be a little bit different. All the rest of them could be basically portraits, like from here up, right? Like the bottom of my rib cage, kind of up. This one I'm asking for a full, full length, but I want you to be seated. And I think it should be interesting. So just sitting straight ahead might not be very interesting looking, but sitting maybe with your legs out to the side, or maybe you're sitting in a tree by your house or something like that. Choosing the way that it's posed, I would say the way that you're wearing clothing too, like that's gonna make it kind of interesting, the clothing that you're wearing. It could even be, maybe you do karate or you do soccer or you do something and that's part of sort of your costume that you're wearing is your outfit. So that could be really interesting as well. Again, looking at full length seated, oops, here. Great shots, all super interesting. And they're all seated and that's kind of the focus is that they're sitting down. For a close crop, as we all know, it tends to kind of distort our faces the closer we get to cameras. So for this one, I recommend uh, cropping later but you want to choose something that's going to be interesting to crop. Just a straight face might not be super interesting, but looking at this one of Bruce Willis with his hand there, that brings something interesting into it. You can also see that he has more light coming in on one side of his face than the other. Again, makes it more interesting. This one being turned to the side, super interesting. That changes everything. The focus becomes completely on her eyes and her makeup and it's very beautiful. It's very striking. So funny or someone laughing. Uh, someone in your house might have to make you laugh or you might have to have a funny video or a meme or something going on uh, next to you to give your to make yourself genuinely laugh. Um, or it could just be a funny face that you're making too. Again here, could be funny photo or someone laughing. And the very last one. So this is the moody or emotional. What I mean by that is a lot of times photography can be used to evoke emotion. So looking at this one on the right, you guys maybe have seen this photo before. It's a historical photo and it's from the Great Depression. Obviously thing was, things weren't easy then, you know, there was a major food shortage, job shortage, economically we were really not doing well. Um, and you can really see that in this woman's face. This is a very famous photograph and it's the migrant mother, that's what it's called. And you can really see like she has these two kids, they're being shy, she's just trying to figure out how she's going to make it through, you know, the day or the week or whatever it is. And that emotion is shown on her face. She looks quite serious. 
The other two have a lot to do with the lighting. So looking at this one, because her clothing is dark and the background is dark and her hair is dark, you really can only see kind of like bits and pieces. So that automatically makes it more kind of moody and mysterious looking. And then looking at this one, the way that it's lit, the background's super dark, but you just sort of see the highlights here on his figure. That's what's gonna make it have that true emotional look. Hard to do, but you can do it using things like a flashlight or a phone flashlight, even because you can alter the brightness of it. You may have other ways of doing this as well, simply just being near a window. That will also create that light on the side of your face in that way. So going back to the top, just want to remind you guys, so you have these are all of your prompts. Okay, you need to have one for each of these. And you need to have 12 photos total, okay? Um, I know a lot of times you guys want to use photos that you already have. I will say for this assignment, you may use two photos that you already have. They do have to be self-portraits. They have to be photos you took of yourself. They cannot be photos that somebody else took. That defeats the whole purpose of the assignment. It is hard to take self-portraits. That's why we're doing it. I'm challenging you guys. So hopefully that answers some questions. And if not, we will have a Zoom session to answer questions as well uh, after spring break, just to sort of keep helping you guys through this process and uh, try out some different assignments. So hopefully this is helpful. I hope you guys all are having a good day and we'll see you soon.